This video is about the derivative of e to the x, one of my favorite functions ever, simply because it has such a great derivative. As you may recall, e is an irrational number whose decimal approximation is something like 2.718. Looks like it's repeating, but then it keeps going on forever, never repeating, never terminating. Its value, notice, is somewhere in between 2 and 3. Here is a graph of y equals e to the x. It's an exponential function, increasing. Looks a lot like 2 to the x or 3 to the x. Not only is the graph of e to the x increasing, but it's increasing more and more rapidly. So for negative values of x, the slope of this graph is positive, but very close to 0. Over here, when x equals 0, that slope is, looks like approximately a slope of 1. We'll see that it is, in fact, exactly 1. And as the x values increase, the tangent lines get steeper and steeper. I'm going to state, without proof, three really useful facts about e. First, if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n raised to the nth power, that limit exists and equals e. You might have seen something like that when you took precalculus and looked at compound interest compounded over smaller and smaller time periods. But even if you haven't seen it before, it's a really important fact worth memorizing. You'll see it again later in the class. A second important formula is that the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h equals 1. Now this expression here on the left may remind you of a derivative. In fact, I can rewrite it as the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the 0 plus h minus e to the 0, since e to the 0 is 1, over h, that that's equal to 1. And this expression right here on the left is just the derivative of e to the x at x equals 0 according to the limit definition of derivative. So this fact is really saying that the derivative of e to the x at x equals 0, that derivative is equal to 1. So for the third fact, the third fact talks about the derivative of e to the x in general. And that third fact is that the derivative of the function e to the x is the function e to the x. e to the x is its own derivative. So this is a generalized version of the second fact because the second fact is saying that the derivative at x equals 0 is 1. Well, 1 is just the same thing as e to the 0. So it's saying the derivative of e to the x at, at x equals 0 is e to the 0. And in general, the derivative of e to the x at any x is just e to the x. Now, fact 1 is frequently taken as the definition of e. Sometimes fact 2 instead is taken as the definition of e, since e is the unique number with this, this property. It's the unique number you can plug in here and get this limit to equal 1. It's possible to prove that fact 1 implies fact 2 and vice versa, but I won't do that here. It's also possible to prove that fact 2 implies fact 3 about the derivative in general. And that's pretty straightforward from the definition of derivative, so I will show you that argument. So let's start out assuming fact 2 and try to prove fact 3 using the definition of derivative. By the definition of derivative, the derivative of e to the x is the limit, as h goes to 0, of e to the x plus h minus e to the x over h. If I factor out and e to the x from both terms on the numerator, I get the limit of e to the x times e to the h minus 1 over h. Notice that e to the x times e to the h is e to the x plus h by the exponent rules. Now, e to the x has nothing to do with h. 
So it's just a constant as far as h is concerned. And I can pull it all the way out of the limit sign and rewrite this limit. Now by fact two, which I'm assuming, this limit here is just one, which means that my derivative is e to the x, just like I wanted to show. Here's a slightly tricky example asking you to compute the derivative of a function that involves lots of e's and x's combined in lots of different ways. You'll need to use not only the rule for the derivative of e to the x that we just talked about, but also the power rule and other rules for derivatives that we've talked about earlier. So please pause the video and try to compute this derivative yourself, paying careful attention to what's a variable and what's a constant. Okay, so we're taking the derivative here with respect to x, that's our variable, and I'm taking the derivative of this entire expression, which I can split up as a sum of derivatives. For the first term, I can just use the power rule. e is a constant coefficient, so I just need to take down the exponent of 2, multiply it on the front, times x to the 1 power. Now for the second part, here I do have my e to the x function multiplied by 2, so its derivative is just 2 times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. For my third part, I have just x times a constant, e squared, so the derivative of x is 1 times that constant, and so I just get e squared. Finally, to take the derivative of x to the power of e squared, I can use the power rule because my variable is in the base and I have a constant e squared in my exponent. So using the power rule, I bring down the e squared times that by x and subtract 1 from the exponent. This video states the happy fact that the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x.